Accounting for the Changing in Prices, International Accounting Standard Number 20, uh, 29, International Accounting Standard Number 29. Uh, it depends on adjusted historical cost, it depends on general price index, which reflects the price changes in all goods and services available in the country for many years. Steps. We have to start to adjust this, to calculate the adjusted historical cost for income statement, the adjusted historical cost for the statement of retained earnings, second step. Third step, adjusted historical cost for the balance sheet. We started with income statement. In income statement, all items has to be adjusted. Adjusted value for any item, historical cost times current price index over historical price index. Current price index in all cases, a price index at December 31, year one, we have only one current price index. So what we need, how to calculate, or how to calculate the historical price index for each of other items. In items, we prepare a table, items and the historical price index. If the items, sales, operating expenses, income taxes, all of them, the historical price index for all of them is the average price index for year one. Depreciation expense, price index at the little purchase, property, plant, and equipment. All, if it is not available at the date of purchase, property, plant, and equipment, we can use price index at the date of establish the company. Cost of goods sold, cost of goods sold, which equal beginning inventory at January 1st year one, plus purchase minus ending inventory, ending inventory at December 31 year one. The beginning inventory is historical price index, is price index at the date of purchase inventory, if it is available. If it is not available, a very average price index for the last quarter in previous year. Purchases such as sales, such as operating expenses, income taxes, historical price index for, for purchases is average price index for year one. Uh, minus ending inventory. The ending inventory is at December 31, year one. The historical price index is average at the date of uh, price index at the date of purchase inventory, if it is available. If it is not available, average price index for last quarter in current year or for year one. If we add beginning inventory plus purchase minus ending inventory, the result is cost of goods sold. The result of preparing the balance, uh, the balance sheet is a retained earnings at December 31, year one. Second step, statement of retained earnings, all items has to be adjusted as follows. Adjusted value equal historical cost times the current price index over the historical price index. Current price index, lower price index at December 31, year one. The historical price index is different from one item to another. We prepared a table items, the historical price index for each item. Beginning at the end at January 1st year one, plus net income minus dividends, the result is ending at the end at December 31, year one. The beginning at the end uh, is coming from previous years or previous year. So historical, it's a historical price index is the average price index for previous year or years. Net income could be calculated by taking into account the equation beginning inventory plus net income minus dividends. The result is ending in, ending retained earnings. A dividends, a historical price index, a price index at the date of payment dividends. A retained earnings at December 31, given in the balance sheet. Or to the balance sheet. Uh, 
In balance sheet, we have to differentiate between monetary items and the non-monetary items. Monetary items will not be adjusted, while non-monetary items has to be adjusted. Adjusted value for non-monetary items, historical cost times the current price index over the historical price index. The current price index is the price index at December 31, year one. Purchasing a power gain or loss is appeared at the balance sheet. The historical price index are as follows in the balance sheet, the non-monetary items. In items, the historical price index, non-monetary items, the ending inventory, marketable securities, plant assets, and accumulated depreciation, and the common stocks. The ending inventory, its historical price index, its price index at the rate of purchase inventory, if it is available. If it is not available, we use average price index for last quarter, year one. Marketable securities, its historical price index, is the price index at the rate of purchase marketable securities. Plant assets and accumulated depreciation, its historical price index, price index at the date of purchase plant assets or the price index at the date of establish the company, common stocks, price index at the date of issue on the common stocks, or price index at the date of establish the company. In example, exercise 22, page 324, we started with income statement. Income statement, revenue minus expenses. Revenue and expenses can end with the main depreciation expense, other expense, and net income. The result is net income. The table is the historical cost. Calculation times calculation. The result is adjusted historical cost. Revenue, depreciation expense, and historical cost is available in the exercise. Times the cal calculation times the current price index of a historical price index. The current price index in all items at December 31, year one, which is 240, in all three items. Revenue and the other expenses, the historical price index is the average for year one, the 160, 160. Depreciation expense, the historical, uh, historical price index at the date of purchase plant assets is not available. At the date of establishing the company, at January 1st, year one, which is 100. The result is 150, 12,000, 52,500. Net income is 85,500. Statement of retained earnings. Beginning a retained earnings at January 1st, year one, plus net income minus dividends. Beginning inventory, uh, retained earnings was zero. Net income was 60,000. There was no dividends during the year. Ending return to earnings is 60,000. Zero times a year uh, is zero. So beginning uh, return to earnings, adjusted historical cost is zero. A dividends, adjusted historical cost is zero. The income, the, uh, net income had given from income statement is 85,500. So ending and retained earnings is 85.5. The balance sheet at December 31, year one. A, a cash and receivable, 85,000. Property and equipment, total assets, payables, contributed capital, the ending and retained earnings at December 31. The result should be purchasing power gain or loss, total liabilities and owner's equity. 85,000, 45,000, total assets 130,000, payables 15, contributed capital 55, ending and returned earnings 60,000, total liabilities is 130,000. Uh, monetary items, which is cash and account receivable, not adjusted. Not adjusted, it means we use the same amount in historical cost. So the adjusted historical cost is 85,000. 
All liabilities are monetary items, not adjusted to. So it's as adjusted historical cost is 15,000 as well. Property, plant, and equipment times the current price index is 240. As the uh, historical at the date of purchase established the company is 100. The same in contributed capital, 240 over 100. The result is 108,000 property and equipment. Purple's uh, contributed capital, 132,000. Uh, ending the retained earnings, I give a statement of retained earnings. Total assets has to be equal to total liabilities and the owner's equity. 193,000. 193,000 minus the total of payable and the contributed capital, the result is purchasing power gain or loss, 39,500. Has been taken from the statement of the 10 banks. How to calculate purchasing power gain or loss without preparing a financial statement? Monetary assets at January 1st year 1 minus monetary liabilities at January 1st year 1 times the current price index at December 31 year 1, which is current rate, over price index at January 1st year 1, which is historical rate, sales times price index at December 31 year 1, which is current rate, over average price index for year 1, the historical price index, Number three, we have to calculate purchase, operating expenses, income taxes, dividends. As we mentioned before, the purchase, operating expenses, income taxes, all of them, the historical price index is the same as sales. So purchase times the price index at current at December 31 year one, the current rate, over average price index for year one, the historical rate. Uh, historical price index, operating expenses times the price index at December 31 year one, and our current rate over pri average price index for year one, which is historical rate. Income taxes, price index at this times the price index at December 31 year one over average price index for year one, and the average and the historical price index. A dividends. Price index at December 31 times price index at December 31 year one over price index at the date of payment dividends. Total of step number three. Step number four, monetary assets at December 31 year one minus monetary liabilities at December 31 year one. Number five, purchasing power gain or loss, step number one, plus two, minus three, minus four. Exercise 22, page three to, five, uh, uh, three to four, calculate purchasing power gain or loss without preparing financial statement. Solution, I will have the monetary assets minus monetary liabilities times at January 1st year 1 times the current rate over uh, current price index over historical price index. Monetary assets 20,000, monetary liabilities 15,000, about 20,000 minus 15,000 times 240 over 100. The uh, historical uh, January 1st year 1. The result is 12,000. Second step, sales 100,000 times current price index, which is 240, over average price index, 160. The result is 150,000. Step number three, purchase, which is 35,000, times 240 over 160, 52,500. 240, the current price index, 160, the average price index. Step number four, total monetary assets at December 31 minus total monetary liabilities at December 31, total monetary assets 85,000 minus monetary liabilities 15,000 
the result is 70,000. Purchasing power gain or loss, as you mentioned before, step number one, plus two, minus three, minus four. Step number one, 20,000, plus two, 150,000, minus three, minus 52, 500, minus four, minus 70,000. The result is 162,000 minus 122,500 within 39,500. Exercise 21, page 32.3. We're here in the beginning, we were talking about loan. The company got a loan for 1 million, uh, 1 million markers. Uh, adjusted historical cost for the loan, 1 million times the current price index over the historical price index. The current price index by the end of year one was 387.5, while the historical price index at Janu January 1st, year one, 250. The result is 1,550,000. Purchasing a power gain or loss, the difference between adjusted historical cost minus historical cost. The result is 1,550,000 one minus 1 million. The result is 550,000. Nominal interest expense. Nominal interest expense is well, interest which will be paid. While the loan is 1 million, million, the interest rate 60% for one year, 12 over 12. The, the, the result is 600,000. هنا لو بصينا بصفة عامة عندنا دلوقتي nominal interest expense المبلغ اللي دفعنا 600,000 في في نفس الوقت we got purchasing power gain 550,000 يبقى real interest expense equal nominal interest expense minus purchasing power gain or loss 600,000 minus 550,000 the result is 50,000 to calculate real interest rate Real interest expense equal amount times the rate times the time. This is a passive real interest expense, 50,000 equal 1 million times the rate times the 12 over 12. If a rate is equal 50,000 over 1 million times 100, the result is 5%. Restate, translate, translate, restate. These two cases are used to face the two problems at the same time. These problems are foreign currency trans translation and the adjusted historical cost real estate. We have two methods, restate translate, translate restate. In restate translate, we have to start by, by adjustment. The adjustment the adjusted value equals historical cost times the current price index over the historical price index. Then we can translate the results. Second method, translate, restate. We start with translation to the other currency. The result will be restated. Restated, it means we, we have to adjust the result. Uh, the adjusted value equals historical cost times the current price index over the historical price index. In exercise 22, page 324, required by using the balance sheet at December 31, year one, general price index and exchange rate uh, prepare the following. Uh, restate, translate, a temporal method for restate. Translate, restate, a temporal method for restate. The first table, we're talking about the balance sheet at December 31, the state translate. The items was cash and receivables, property plant and equipment, total assets, payables, contributed capital, retained earnings, purchasing power gain or loss, and translation gains or loss. Uh, we started with restate. Restate, we mentioned before, monetary items will not be adjusted. 
So cash and the account receivable, we use the same amount, 85,000. Payables, we use the same amount, 15,000. The property plant and the equipment has to be adjusted. Has, has to be adjusted. Times 45,000 times the current price index over the historical price index. The result is 108,000. Contributed capital, but 55,000 times the current price index over the historical price index. A retained earnings, we used 60,000 times the current price index over historical price index. The historical price index is retained earnings for retained earnings equal. The historical price index is the average rate for previous year because uh, uh, for, for, for the current year. Because retained earnings happened during year one, the result of net income for year one. So we used the average rate. So total assets was 193,000. The same amount is total liabilities and the owner's equity. The difference between total liabilities and the owner's equity and payables and the contributed capital is nine uh, is, uh, and the retained earnings 50,000, which is considered as purchasing power loss. This state translate. We have to translate the results. Monetary items using the current rate. Non-monetary items we use his, uh, historical rate. Uh, the cash and the, rece and the receivables. With payables we use the current rate. Uh, the property and the equipment contributed capital we use the historical rate. The historical rate, the result of cash and the account receivable, three, four hundred thousand. Uh, uh, the result of property, plant, and equipment is one, ten, eight hundred thousand. Total assets is fourteen, two hundred thousand. The payables time, current rate, uh, the contributed capital at historical rate. Total assets was 14,200, the same amount to total liabilities and the owner's equity. The difference between 14,200,000 th and the other amounts, the result is purchasing a power gain lo loss and the translation gains or loss. Notes to restate ending and retained earnings, we used the average price index for year one as historical price index because these retained earnings are the net income for year one. To translate ending and retained earnings, we used the average exchange rate for year one, two. Translate this state. The only difference between this method and the previous method, we started with translation. Then the result will be adjusted. Translation we have to differentiate between monetary items, non-monetary items. The monetary items, cash and the receivables and the payables. These two, um, uh, two items has to be translated at current rate. Property and the equipment, contributed capital and the retained earnings. These items has to be translated at average rate. Uh, sorry, at historical rate, property, plant, because they are non-monetary items. So, 45,000 times 100, 55,000 times 100, 60,000 times. The historical for retained earnings, the average for year one, which is 70. So, we translate. Total assets equal 7,900,000, nine equal total liabilities 7,900,000. Nine the difference between total liabilities and owner's equity and other amounts is 2,400,000, nine which is considered as translation gains or loss. 
Translated state. After translation, we have to restate times the current price index over the historical price index. Monetary items will not be adjusted. Cash and the account receivable, the same amount. Payables is the same amount. Property, plant, and equipment. Contributed capital. Retained earnings times the current price index over the historical price index. The result is 63. Uh, total assets equal 14,200 for 200,000. The difference be between total liabilities and owner's equity and the other amount is 63,20,000. Top up depreciation, that is the last subject in this, uh, in international accounting. Uh, top up depreciation, the main objective of calculating depreciation expense are to calculate the real depreciation expense. If we calculate the real depreciation expense, we can calculate the real expenses and the real net income. To set aside amount of money every year to be used to purchase a new equipment at the end of its lifetime. Yani, we can keep amount of money to purchase a new equipment at the end of its lifetime. To calculate the real depreciation expense for each year, we can use the following equation. Adjusted historical cost for depreciation expense equal historical cost for depreciation times the current price index over the historical price index. The total amount of real depreciation expense is not enough to purchase a new equipment at the end of its lifetime. Therefore, we have to calculate the top-up depreciation that could be declared in the following example. Example, assume that the company purchased a new equipment at January 1st year 1 by $70,000, lifetime 5 years, residual value at December 31 year 5, 7,000, price index are as follows, at January 1st year 1, 100, December 31 year 1, 110, December 31, year 2, 125. December 31, year 3, 140. December 31, year 4, 150. December 31, year 5, 160. Required the pre prepared schedule of depreciation and declare the real depreciation expense for each year and number two, top up depreciation for each year. The annual depreciation expense at historical cost, 70 real. Cost minus residual value over lifetime, 70,000 minus 7,000 over 5, 63,000 over 5, 12,600. The adjusted historical cost for depreciation, depreciation expense at historical cost times the current price index over the historical price index. For year one, for year two. For year one, 12,600 times 110 over 100. For year two, 12,600 times 125 over 100. The result is 13,860, 15,750. The same equation is used for year three, year four, year five. Then we can prepare a schedule of depreciation as follows. At December 31, year one, year two, year three, year four, year five, total. Depreciation expense at historical cost, 12,600, 12,600 in all of five years. Depreciation expense real adjusted after uh, calculating 12,600 times the current price index over the historical price index. In year one, 13,860. In year two, 15,750. Uh, year three, 17,640. Year 4, 18,900. Year 5, 21,60. Uh, year the total is 86,300. To calculate top up depreciation, first year is zero, it's always zero. Second year, year 2, depreciation adjusted historical cost for depreciation expense in year 2 minus year 1 times 1. 15,750. Minus 13,860 times 1. The result is 1,890. 
in year 3, year 3 minus year 2 times 2, 17, 60, 40 minus 15, 750 times 2. The result is 3, 7, 80. In year 4, year 4 minus year 3 times 3, 18, 900 minus 17, 60, 40 times 3. In year 5, 5 minus 4 times 4, 2160 minus 18,900 times 4. The result is 5,040. Total of top up depreciation is 414,490. Total of depreciation. Total of depreciation equal total of depreciation expense, real depreciation expense, our adjusted depreciation expense plus top up depreciation, the result is 100, 800. It should be equal to purchase price minus residual value times the current price index over the total price index. The purchase price was 70,000, residual value 7,000 times 160 over 100 equals 63,000 over 160 over 100. The result is 100, 800. Total depreciation 100, 800 should be equal to this amount 100, 800.